Discipline and consistency separate the good from the great. Welcome to the Millionaire Woman Show, where we'll be discussing leadership, business, human potential, inspiring you to live rich from the inside out. Unlock your creativity, stretch out of your comfort zone, break through your barriers, take inspired action, and achieve epic results. Now here's your host, three-time best-selling author, speaker, and certified executive coach, Deborah Kozowski. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Millionaire Woman Show, where we inspire you with guests from around the world to inspire, educate, and motivate you to move into action, into living rich from the inside out. Today, my special guest was introduced to me by Adam Shively from Podcast Business School, and he is a phenomenal connector, so I want to give a shout out to Adam, and please welcome Melissa Vogel. She's an energetic keynote speaker, business owner, certified personal trainer, certified group fitness instructor, nutritional coach, actress, hmm, didn't know that, second degree black belt in Taekwondo, and mother of three, and a podcaster. Melissa has been voted as the best personal trainer for 2020 by Inland Empire Magazine and built Busy to Bomb Fit Mom exercise system. With over 20 years of experience in the fitness industry, Melissa has not only been able to help others achieve their fitness goals, she leads by example. And as one of the most sought after personal trainers and fitness instructors in Inland Empire, Melissa is independently grown her in-person and online personal training business successfully with her proven exercise techniques and unique picture food program clients not only achieve amazing results, they get back into shape and learn how to be fit for life. As a mother of three and fitness professional, Melissa understands the struggle of a busy life and how difficult it can be to fit fitness in. And it is this real life experience that Melissa was able to develop her workout routines and fitness guides. She single-handedly created the exercise programs that other exercise programs uh, women could use to gain the same health success that she has achieved. Please welcome Melissa Vogel to the show. Yay! Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm so excited to have you. You know, I I said, you know, I was combing through your social media and just thinking of the different things that we would talk about. But one of the things that really stood out to me is you had a picture of who you are today and where you've come from. And I'm always fascinated with a person's journey because we see snap pictures in time and people often compare themselves to other people, not they look at that moment in time and they're like, oh, I wish that was me. Yeah. And one of the things that you had was like looking out the window. How many of us are looking out the window, wishing for things to change in our lives, but not moving into action? So I would love to, for you to share what was that moment or what was the series of moments that led you to move from wishing to actually going into execution mode? Oh, uh, that's funny you say that because I literally know the exact moment in time where I was like, what happened to me? Because, you know, I've always been fit and active and, and, and had three kids. And it was like with each pregnancy, like the weight came on and, and I would try to, to look good and, 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 you know, pull for my years of experience and training. Cause I know all the things I still gained 65 pounds. I still become, became like unrecognizable to myself. And there was this moment where I was trying to do the workout in my basement, you know, and I was doing a move called mountain climbers. You're on your hands and you run your knees into your chest and you do this fast paced move. And it was at that moment, I felt something hit like the top of my thighs. And I was like, what is that? What is that? That's a weird feeling. And I'm like, oh my God, that's my stomach. My stomach was so large. My mom pooch was so large. It was hitting my thighs and I lost it. I had like this breakdown moment and cried on my floor. And I was like, who did I become? How did I get here? Melissa, who are you anymore? You're just this mom blob now. And why, you know, what's holding you back from moving forward? So I literally had like a breaking moment that's like ingrained in my brain. And it was from then that I was like, this is it. 
like never again will I feel like this again. And that's when I took the next step forward. It fascinates me for that we need to find there's always that moment where you, it's either people capture a look in the mirror or they have the moment like you did. I remember looking through some pictures and I have three kids too. And my goal after every kid, in order to have the next kid, I needed to get back to my body weight. Yeah. <laughs> so I did triathlon. I, you know, ran a 10 K each one had a goal behind it. But then when I knew that I wasn't having any more kids, that last year, I remember, I think it was a 10 K. It was a year after my son was born and, uh, all my training partners moved away. One moved to two of them, one moved South and one moved to another province in here in Canada. And, uh, I was like lost complete motivation, mm -hmm. complete motivation. And at the same time I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism and, I look at some of the pictures and I'm like, I think you get caught up in the role of mom um, and your career and you lose sight of who you once were and what got you excited about things. And, you know, I think there was one picture that I looked at and I thought, okay, this has got to change. And I started by one day a week getting back to the gym and um, definitely don't have the abs that you have today because I was looking at your speaker <laughs> sheet and like, now that's inspired <laughs> dream goals hashtag that's something i'm working toward <laughs> but to really think about those changing moments i think people think it's not possible for them you know some might not want to get to the extent of looking like the professional fitness model or mm -hmm. you know um, sure. where you're at but i think people need to understand this is really a lifestyle so I would love for you to speak about fitness, exercise, and, you know, how, how it's not something that we're just looking at for a moment in time, like that race that you think you're going to get to. Yeah. And it's, it's so hard. It's, I'm just, some days I honestly feel like I'm just fighting this losing battle because with social media, the internet, we want instant gratification, right? Like we want the internet, boom, hit a button swipe, swipe, swipe. You want to find a partner? Swipe, swipe. You like, you like, you don't, you know, it's, it's just now, now, now we live in this now world and people transfer that to their health and fitness journey. And they're like, Oh my God, I had a salad. Why don't I have abs? <laughs> you know, I bought a gym membership and I went in a week. Why haven't I dropped 30 pounds? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, I hate saying this, but it's not our fault. It really isn't because we just, the environment that we live in, the social media, what we're exposed to, you know, we turn on the TV and we see a famous person holding her picture next to her. And she's like, look at my results that I got in just 12 weeks. And it just feeds this notion that like, you just need to eat right, exercise. And within six to 12 weeks, you should have your results. And that's not true. That is a complete fallacy. And you're right. It has to become something that it's a marathon that you're probably going to run for the next 10 years. You know, <laughs> it's not a sprint at all, but so many people want, you know, oh, I need the abs for the summer and they go, 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 go. And then they just let it go. And they're just up and down and up. And they don't find that medium of like, no balance learn how to eat to be fit for the rest of your life, learn to fall in love with exercise, which a lot of people think is impossible. And I'm like, no, you can actually wake up and be like, oh, I'm so excited for legs day. I used to hate legs day. And now I do legs three times a week. That just seems nuts. But I've learned to fall in love with this process. I've opened my mind to it. I've connected my mind and my body to it. And that's what I coach other women to, to do as well. And when you can have that loving connection and that relationship, you don't look at it as like, oh, this just has to happen in three weeks. You look at it as like, no, this is the way I'm going to live my life for the rest of my life. Yeah. And I want to qualify. Like, I know we're, we're talking a lot about women. So guys listening here, don't worry. There's nuggets in here for you too. We oh, absolutely. You know, we know about the dad bod and, you know, the beer bellies and all, all that kind of thing. We're here to talk to you about really showing up for yourself and, you know, you mentioned self-love and, you know, I had been doing a lot of reading on that recently because someone's like, you got to love yourself and I'm doing this to love myself. And I'm like, okay, I'm eating healthy. 
I am going to the gym. I'm doing these things. What else is self love all about? You know, and it took me some time to really understand what people were talking about. Cause I'm like, if I'm taking care of myself, that's self love, but there's more to it than that. So I'd be curious for you to share what your take on self love is, Melissa. Yeah, absolutely. And we think like, oh, I showed up at the gym, like you said, like, oh, I'm loving myself. I exercised. And there has to be this loving connection between the mind and the body. Um, and I tell women all the time and my men clients, my male clients that, you know, if you are really looking to make changes and transform your, your mind, your body, your soul, become healthier and fit, you have to become mentally fit as well as physically fit. The more your body gets stronger, more tone, more lean, because you're dropping body fat, your brain has to learn how to love and embrace where you're at now. So it's open to love and embrace the new you as well. Um, and if you don't make those mental changes, the more fit you become, awesome, wonderful, but the old you will continue to self-sabotage and you won't understand why. And you'd be like, why did I just binge eat? Like, why did I just do that? I, I know that I shouldn't have, and I didn't even feel good after. And it really does go back to loving yourself. And then you can, you know, willingly accept the new you as well. Otherwise, the old you will just try to get right back in that driver's seat of the bus and be like, nope, we're taking over. <laughs> we don't want that old you. Our brains like what's familiar. We love what's familiar. and self-sabotaging behaviors familiar, you know, looking in the mirror and just saying, Oh God, if I, if only I look like this or, Oh, I hate the way I look. And some people just avoid mirrors altogether. That's not self-love. And a lot of people aren't even aware of what they say to themselves when they're standing in front of the mirror. They have no clue. And they're like, Oh, look at my pores or the ba bags under my eyes. They don't look at themselves and say, Hey, you look really good today. Or this, this is, this actually looks better today. And, and our bodies hear that. Our body and our mind has to be connected. I say all the time, and this isn't my original quote, but your mind is the general, your body is the soldiers, and your body will do whatever your mind tells it to do. So if your mind is like, we love ourselves, we work hard, we're strong, we're toned, your body will go, okay, sure, okay. And there has to be that connection. Otherwise, it's, it's the weight loss, terrible roller coaster that you'll stay on for life. And, and what those soldiers are saying is like, okay, let's get to it. Let's make it happen. Yep. And, you know, and I love that you brought this up because when we do look in the mirror and, you know, one of the exercises that I like to do with people too, is that confidence factor for every time you um, criticize yourself, because that's usually when you look in the mirror, that's what you're finding. Like you said, the bags under the eyes and that it's like a paper doll being torn up. Every time you say something, you tear it up and you're throwing, throwing it up in the air like confetti. And then how do you put that back together again? Right. And, you know, on this show, we talk a lot about mindset and how you don't even realize some of the things that you're saying to yourself. So one of the things that really made me understand this self-talk, because someone was talking, had a Facebook live video the other day about a self-love challenge. And I was just paying attention to what they were doing. They were supposed to look in the mirror and say, you know, I love myself. And I was like, interesting because it was a struggle for someone to say, because the first thing they looked at was what was wrong with themselves. Yeah. And it really comes down to that self-talk and really being able to get yourself in a change of state. I know uh, today I was a little bit thrown off. I had a passing of a family member earlier that was unexpected and just before I was coming on to do this podcast, I'm like, okay, Deb, you know, you got to change your state. So Aww. I'm curious, Melissa, what do you do to change your state and really be able to show up in the world when you need, you know, you need to be showing up? Yeah. And it's difficult. And I've learned over the years of working on myself and really mastering this mindset and the vision and clarity that it, what you say to yourself, like, I love myself. I like the way I look. And there's part of our brain going, yeah, right. Like bullshit, you know, yeah. how you word it too plays a really big role. So saying words like I am open to being healthy and fit. My body and my mind is open to loving itself. 
and your body and your mind become a little bit more accepting of that instead of feeling forced. Um, so if I'm having a crappy day and I need to do, you know, new affirmations and I have a dry erase board, I write my dry, my affirmations on sticky notes and, you know, all the other good stuff, but I also have a dry erase board because every day I clean that off and something new is happening in my life and those affirmations need to change. And some days it's just like, I'm open to changing my mood right now. Not, I'm going to have a better mood right now, you know? Um, but that, and just flow. Sometimes I just need to sit, stretch, deep breathing while I'm saying things. And that, the opening and getting your ligaments flowing and fresh blood, you know, sent up your spinal cord by just a gentle like yoga twist. Oh my God, it can rock your world. And that's like the importance too of having a routine every single morning and just doing five minutes of something easy like that. Yeah. It can change your entire day. And, you know, when I'm thinking about it, the taming the gremlin, like that inner critic that comes out, especially, you know, when you've started a program or you're, you're working on yourself or, you know, you've started eating differently because, you know, 80% of it is in the kitchen Yep. and, you know, this voice comes up and says, you know what, you've done this before. You're not going to last or, you know, oh, you think you're going to fit those jeans or whatever comes up. What, what do you tell clients when they might confess to you that this is some of the voices that come up? I know I would have to think that it's fairly normal, especially when you're making change that the voices come up even louder. Oh, absolutely. And you're crazy if you think that it, it won't happen, you know, and one of the biggest things that I've learned over the years is to put people together in an environment of, so they can learn together instead of just one-on-one. -on -one. I love personal training one-on-one -on -one and stuff, but when you can put people together, that really helps because then they get to express, this is what I'm feeling today. And someone else can chime in and be like, me too. And just not feeling alone is powerful. It makes you feel like that you're not a freak, that you're just not this person that's out to get yourself and self-sabotage self because you're like, oh my God, she felt it too. Okay. Well, how can we work through this together? You know, it, because if you're experiencing this, and I'm experiencing this, let's push through. And then someone else can chime in and be like, this is what I do. So always, because I love how you brought it up to in the beginning, Deborah, about how your friends moved away and then you felt lost. Yeah. That was your support system. That was your environment. And that's huge, huge. So one of the biggest things that people can do is surround themselves with like-minded people that are going to help them identify this, move past it, work through it, normalize it, and, and know that it's okay. I feel like crap today, or I feel like I'm going to self-sabotage, or I feel like I'm not going to fail, period. Okay. Embrace it learn from it, grow from it. What does it mean? And a lot of people just try to put this wall up and they're like, oh yeah, I probably am going to fail. And then they let the, you know, the gremlin take over, but knowing that it's not abnormal, that it's okay to feel these feelings and just put a period at the end. It can help you so much move forward. I love how you say that, put that period. Cause it's a stop. Right? Yeah. You're stopping that emotion. You're stopping that from just repeating itself. And it's kind of like, okay, gave you time to vent. Now to embrace the suck and get to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that's okay. All the emotions and feelings are okay. So in what ways do our emotions impact our results and how much effort we're putting in? Oh my God, girl. <laughs> so much. And one of the things that I'm always bringing awareness to my clients is like, pay attention to like weigh in day. When we weigh in, we only do it. We only step on that scale or get scanned um, or do our before and after photos once a month, every four weeks. And when, cause there's a lot of women and men who get on the scale every day and they weigh themselves daily. And then that scale gets, gives, takes their power and is like, oh, you're up two pounds. Not because you put on two pounds of fat overnight, but because maybe you just have to go to the bathroom or you had a little extra sodium the day before. But in our minds, it's like, oh my God, I gained two pounds. That sets their emotions and their mood for the rest of the day. So one, be very aware of what on the outside 
you give your power over to. And for some people, it's this piece of junk metal on their bathroom floor that shows them numbers. And they're like, here, tell me how I'm going to feel today. Yeah. So, oh, it's so sad. It drives me nuts. Some clients, I literally have to tell them to like, give this to your husband or your wife and go hide your scale in your garage. Like, I don't even want it out. So they have to practice minding your emotions. Learn that when you step on that scale and you're down five pounds, don't like throw the biggest party ever. Be like, cool, awesome, I learned. Manage those emotions, stay here. And then when you get on the scale and maybe you're up five pounds, okay, cool, let's learn from this. What did I do wrong? What did I do right? And that's difficult. That's really difficult to keep your emotions in one straight level because if you don't, you will stay on that roller coaster of win, loss, win, loss. And then that seeps into your business and your family and your relationships because you're constantly just like reacting out of emotion. But when you can get practice with your weigh-ins and on your fitness journey, you will actually be having a conversation with your spouse or your boss or a really difficult client. And you can be like, okay, well, let's talk about this. Let's, let's react out of thought, not in emotion, you know? You know what I love, what just triggered me as you said that, just that last sentence was when you talked about, I am open and just whatever comes after I am open, because many times, you know, I've even taught, you know, affirmations that if people are in a place of not believing what they're saying, that we say I'm in progress of, but there's something about, I am open that it's like opening a door that allowing that flow so much differently than saying I'm in progress of. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I hear I am open, it says to me, I am curious about what's possible for me. And it takes the pressure off. Yeah. It, it's something about being open and accepting that takes major pressure off of like, okay, I'm open to it. So if it doesn't come, it's okay. And if it comes, it's, that's okay too. Yeah. Just open. And I, I can't screw this up. Stepping on a scale is a like bathing suit shopping for, for many women. It it's very discouraging. Um, you know, depending on the angle you stand at, you know, if you watch some of the videos on Instagram, I, you know, I can tell you if you stand a certain way, you'll look very different in your bikini when you're trying them on. <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, that's one thing I'm always honest with about in my group too. I will do lives and not have my shirt on. Um, and I'll be in my sports bra after workout and I'll be like, Hey, like, like, look, this is what it really looks like. Now watch this guys. And I'll turn to the side, flex my abs, like squeeze and flex. And I'm like, I'm a totally different person. Be very aware of what you're opening your mind to on social media. And no, there's a lot of Photoshopping that happens, angles, lighting, spray tans, <laughs> yes. And it, and it does make such a difference, though, those little things. And I think that's where people, when they get caught in that comparison trap, they're not comparing apples to apples or oranges no. to oranges. And they need to be really careful about what they're comparing themselves to. Uh, I know that, you know, I hadn't weighed myself in years and started just using tape measure to watch progress. And I had, I felt more rewarded that way sometimes than yeah. the other way. But then I saw someone who um, just got into bodybuilding and she had a picture of her with less weight and, you know, very much a different shape to her than when she started bodybuilding and weighing more. Oh, for sure. And she looks so much more toned now, right? So you're like, don't be deceived by a number on the scale. You know, it, it's, it's about fitness for life and it, and, you know, I like the term, you know, when we are looking for our wins, what are those non-scale victories that we can really look at maybe. And I, and I love how you said, cause it, it transfers over to everything in life. It does have that difficult conversation, but not realizing it's just that you found your power within. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and that's why we use so many different tools. You should. I love that you said you use the tape measure, use the scale or like at like a NutriShop or a GNC, like you can do like an in-body um, scanning system, pictures and pictures at different angles, the front, the side, the back, like all these things are different ways to collect data on your body. Don't just rely on that number. Yeah. Um, and I have to say too, I loved 
how you said we have to be very careful, you know, like who we compare ourselves to apples to apples, oranges to oranges, because a lot of people like you and I, we've had three babies. We have no business following some chick on social media that's had no babies. Like her body hasn't been stretched three times back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You know, like (laughs) that 20 year old should have abs and she should be in a bikini. You know, I give power and credit to women that have given birth multiple times and they're still rocking abs and they've pushed and they've learned how to transform their body after giving birth. Cause that's real work. You know, that's, that's real progress. So be careful who you follow, who you compare yourself to. I mean, we shouldn't be comparing yourself to anyone, but yeah. bring yeah. awareness well, to it. There is an article. I think it was one of Oprah's little, what I know for sure. It was an Oprah mm-hmm. magazine and she was talking about how women who've had babies, I think it was a mother's day article or something about their stretch marks. And they, someone referred to it as a tiger mark. And really the way she reframed it, it was so powerful in saying each of those marks tells a story. So, you know, for anyone viewing our video here or listening to us on iTunes, you know, and you're self-conscious about your ab or your mom pooch, or, you know, what you were saying with the mountain climbers, knowing that there's a story behind that. And there's a lot of love that came with that. So to love your body as much as, you know, the baby you were carrying that that's that's called life you know so very very powerful Heck yeah 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 and be proud of it we're we're superhumans like <laughs> yes, we, we can grow and create another human inside our body like that's freaking cool and yeah that's gonna create extra fat on the midsection because our our bodies are like we're designed to procreate And our body is going to carry extra fat there because it's like, oh, there could be a baby in there, even though we could be totally done. But it's like, I got to protect that. You know, and women get really mad that they're like, I just can't lose this stomach. Why won't the stomach go? And I'm like, girl, it thinks you're going to have another baby, even though you're done. Learn to love it and accept it and know that it's there to cushion a new life that you could create. And then look at your fitness journey a little bit different. Look at it as like, I'm getting strong and powerful. So now I can show my little cubs (laughs) that mom's in charge. Mom can protect you. I'm, you know, this boss babe and, and not oh, I need you to just lose this fat and get skinny. No, 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 no. We're, I'm, I'm mama bear now, you know, and now I'm strong. So I got you guys. Look at it that way instead of on a diet and exercise program. <laughs> and, and I love that analogy, you know, mama bear and the cubs, because, you know, yeah. I'm also thinking about when, when something goes off, that mama bear really shows up. And she's going to be strong and you don't even know where that strength comes from. So I'd love for women and men too, who are listening to dig deep when you have that, because if you have the power within to protect someone, you have the power within to protect yourself. Melissa, I'd love for you to touch base on, because we know stress, you know, when people are carrying a lot of stress, maybe not getting enough sleep that that their cortisol levels go up there and you know that can contribute a lot to, as well so i'd love for you to speak a little bit about some coping strategies or things that you talk with your clients about how to ensure that you know that stress goes down oh for sure and that's one thing that people don't see like stepping on the scale it stresses them out their body produces the cortisol the stress hormone which then makes you hold on to weight it's like a survival protective thing and you're literally on this vicious cycle every single day so being very aware of what triggers that and maybe someone listening is like oh my god i'm i'm the person that gets on the scale every day just stopping that and bringing those hormones down can make a huge difference. And then also sleep. As an adult, we all really should be striving for at least eight hours. And trust me, I know that is a struggle for me. I literally have to like count on my fingers, eight hours. What time do I have to go to bed? (laughs) What time do I have to get up? (laughs) And I have to be consciously aware of it. But if you are going to bed at two in the morning, your body goes through this whole hormone healing process. you know, and some say it's from three to five, it's all different, but 
either way, your body goes through this detox healing process. And if you're going to bed too late, you're missing those healing hormones that regenerate and, you know, re-energize our body for the morning. So be very aware of that. And how you fall asleep is crucial. You are a million times better falling asleep, reading a book, or even listening to a podcast than staring at your screen. And so many people get caught up on their social media time laying in bed. There was this picture one time I saw, you might've even saw it too. And it was like an overview of a couple laying in bed and they were both looking at their phones, but they erased the phone out of their hand. And all you saw was the couple sitting there with their hand up in the air, completely ignoring each other. Mm -hmm. And that picture hit me so hard. And ever since then, I don't think I've fallen asleep to my phone because I was like the disconnect there being exposed to your eyes and a bright screen, Mm -hmm. you know, and that, and now we're supposed to close our eyes and just shut off our brain and go to bed, (laughs) you know, being aware how much you get, how you fall asleep, knowing your triggers of what's going to stress you out and what's not. Um, And that can be even as simple as waking up, not having dishes in your sink. I've had several women that have just applied a little bit of a routine before they go to bed because they knew that they wake up, they see dishes, they're like, oh, and it triggers them. Identifying one little thing that triggers you. Maybe it's just having a clean bathroom countertop. That trigger and taking it away can reduce your stress level like 85% for a single day. It's huge. So know your triggers, identify it. And people use the word trigger so much and they're like, oh, I'm triggered. I'm triggered. And just know that triggered means anything that evokes a negative emotion from you. That could be your no, kid I, leaving I their shoes on the floor. I love that you're talking about this because, you know, we think it's all these big changes that people need to make. Mm-hmm. I know for myself, I've um, really, some of it, I, I will say I'm guilty of, you know, on occasion, I'm looking at the screen. I'm getting yep. better at it. I we all are. A timer on it so it informs me of how much screen time that I've had. Um, usually, it's because I went for a run or a walk or something that I use um, my uh, Map My Run app. So yeah. counting that as well, or I'm listening to YouTube videos or something like that on the treadmill or you know on the bike. But one of the things that I've done um, just recently, I needed to change my pillow. I'm a side sleeper and my pillow was just annoying me knowing that I was tossing and turning, not having a good pillow. Mm -hmm. So pillow is a big deal. Um, I also brought a diffuser a few years ago and keep it at my bedside and start listening to some jazz music. So that sleep hygiene that you're talking about is really important, you know, to really get yourself into that rest state. You know, I know some people recommend an hour away from the screen before you even crawl Mm -hmm. into bed. Yep. Especially for kids. Definitely for kids, you should be shutting it down, but people just dismiss these little things. And I love that you've identified like the pillow. That's a big deal to me, Mm -hmm. you know, but we, we learn, especially, you know, as parents, we learn to just tolerate so much and we don't realize that these tolerations that build up and build up and build up, they really cut back at us and they make us less productive at our jobs, our careers, our health goals, and just putting an end to one little thing, making yourself go out and buy that new pillow, you know, making yourself put that diffuser next to your bed can just, the, the little things do matter. And, and we dismiss them way too much. And we think, oh, it's not going to make a big difference. Uh, if I go for that walk today, or if I just skip it, is it really going to matter? It does. It will. And, you know, we were talking about, you know, I'm I'm doing the 75 hard program and you don't, you have no excuses. You have to have one workout outside. And the other day it was like minus 38, minus 46. And all you could see is the slits of eyes with my hood, hood and double neck warmer and toque and, and things like that. When you hear a client come up with is an excuse or an explanation or a reason why they didn't follow through on something. How do you approach that so that they can show up for themselves? Yeah. On the back of one of our sweatshirts that our new swag that we're having made, it says, you know, busy to bomb fit moms, we're stronger than our excuses. And I have to, and, and we have a million of them, right? And I empathize and sympathize with all of them, but you really have to learn to become stronger than that excuse. Your why 
and what you're working for at the end of your challenge, at the end of this three-year journey, or, you know, why you're even showing up and doing a workout or eating right, or working towards this business plan, however you want to apply it, your, your reason why has to be bigger than the exercise. There has to be a driving force behind you. And it can't just be, well, I just want to get in a bathing suit. Well, that's great. But when you're like, I don't feel like getting up in the cold and doing this workout, no one really cares about that bikini. But if you're looking to drive and fuel yourself that like, you know what? I want my immune system strong so I don't get sick. Or if I do, I'm strong enough to beat it. Or some women are like, I want to walk confidently at the mall with my girls and know that like, this is one of my reasons why, but I want to know that like, no one could mess with me because I'm pretty strong and I'm going to put up a pretty good fight and I want to stay strong and tough and know that I could defend myself. Like that why has to be so big and so great to help push you through. And it's got to be bigger than your excuses. And you don't get good at overcoming your excuses unless you put in that what I, what I always call, I don't feel like it rep. So when you don't feel like doing that workout, but you do it anyways, you put in a rep. And then the next day when you don't feel like eating right or, or you make a good choice, okay, you do it anyways, that's another rep. And we only get muscle. We only make gains. We only become better business women and men by putting in the rep. So if you want to get stronger than your excuse, you got to put in the rep of beating that excuse over and over and over again. And then you get the muscle. I, I love it. It's all, I'm going to put that on my wall. <laughs> put Do it. it. <laughs> yes. Because, you know, there, there's times when you hear people saying, well, I'm being consistent. I'm not necessarily as intense all the time, but consistency matters, especially on those days that you don't feel like pushing is hard because your body might be sore or you're tired from a long day of work. But once you get started, it you, you have this shift in energy. But what I'm curious about is how you approach helping people become more disciplined when there's the question of intensity versus consistency. Yeah, well, and discipline comes over time. You are not going to, you know, override 20 years of not being disciplined and not being taught by your parents. You know, discipline isn't something that I think is just passed on. That That's something that's earned. That's something that you have to work at every day, just like a muscle to gain. And you don't become disciplined overnight. Consistency and discipline go hand in hand. And you will become more disciplined the more consistent you are. And people don't realize like walking, the power of just walking every single day, that just, that teaches you how to be consistent and it shows yourself and it proves to you that, you know what, if I can do this every single day, your mind and your body make that connection of working together and know, oh no, she's going to do this no matter what. So there's no, no need to even fight this because she's going to keep showing up and then they learn to work together. And over time, you're like, other people notice and they're like, oh my God, you're so disciplined. Like, how did you, I, you walk every single day. I see you showing up on our Apple watch because we're friends and like, oh my God, you really do walk every day. And, and you were like, mm, yeah, I didn't always used to be that. That wasn't always me, but I've done it so many times now. I'm consistent. I got some real discipline. And that's really cool when you can transfer that to your food and your nutrition. And you can be at the birthday party or the gathering and everyone else is just binging. And, it, and you're like, you know what? I put in the reps of being super consistent. And like, I can say no to that because I'm disciplined, not on a diet, not missing out. I'm just disciplined. And I have so much self-love and confidence that I know that I'm better than the chips and dip and the pizza that you're all eating. And this is just a moment in time and I'm not going to miss out on it. And I'm okay. Cause you have that discipline of the body and the mind working together. You know, I love how you just said that because really when I'm thinking about how your mind and body are connected and how the messaging, when, when you're at the party and you see all that, cause I, I know, you know, I can say in my own house, you know, people are eating things and I know I'm doing clean eating right now. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Like it doesn't after t over time, it doesn't phase you. Maybe initially it does, mm -hmm. but my own personal experience is it, it's like, 
no, I like how I feel. I like the results I'm getting and there's nothing like it's an addiction to see results. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And people don't realize that, you know, like I said before, you're undoing years of bad habits, you know, and people don't see they, again, it goes to that instant gratification, but I'm like, girl, you didn't get here overnight. This is things that you've learned and patterns you've learned as a child onto your teens. And then when you were in college and then you became a parent, like, and now all of a sudden you want to make change and you're mad that change hasn't showed up overnight. Uh, uh-uh. give yourself some grace because we're erasing years of bad habits that weren't passed on to you. These weren't taught in school. You know, we weren't taught like discipline like that in school. We were forced to do our homework. <laughs> we were forced to do things, you know, but there's so much power in, in saying no and making the right choices because you're showing yourself, I am strong enough. I can do this. And even though you might not want to get up and do that 5 a.m. workout in the bitter cold, after you're done, your mind and your body are like, oh, we can do it. It is possible. Okay. There's so much power in that. Totally a mindset game. Yeah. You've got to play a game back with your mind because really either, either that, or it's going to take you out. So, yeah. you know, Mel Robbins talks about the five second rule, you know, one, Love it. Yes. and you're just out and gone shot like a gun. And, you know, when I think about it, there's so many times that we can hit the snooze button, but when you think of the meaning that you attach to things, and you know, it's the meaning that you put behind having that dessert, you mm-hmm. know, we can have celebration, but we have celebration associated with dessert or pizza. How can you change the association in your mind of what meaning you give something and what needs to be part of the celebration, right? It took me a while to really understand when people said, you know, no, no, what you think is a problem isn't the problem. It's the meaning we put behind the problem. And really focusing on that. So I know nutrition plays a huge part in making these healthy lifestyle changes. What would be three things that you would recommend to people if they're just starting small, you know, thinking about what what is something small that I could tweak in my diet that can help lead me to making some better choices? Yeah, you know, one, don't tell yourself that there isn't anything you can't have. Like take the word diet out of your vocabulary and your mind. Because the moment that we hear, oh, I'm on a diet, I can't have that. Guess what you're going to keep craving? You know, if you're like, I can't have ice cream. Like I'm on this diet for the next six weeks. You're going to want it. And even if you are strong enough to make it the next six weeks without eating it, guess what the First thing you're going to have and eat way too much of when that six weeks is over, ice cream. (laughs) Life is about balance and your nutrition should be about balance. People don't realize that I eat ice cream and, and all the good foods and pizza and everything. I, I don't like when I'm at a birthday party, you better believe I'm getting cake. And people always comment to me and they're like, oh my God, you're eating cake. Oh my God, you guys look, Melissa's eating cake. And I'm like, hell yeah, I'm eating cake. I don't come to a birthday party. I only come here for the cake. Like, what do you mean? (laughs) And they don't realize that I have so much balance in my life. And I knew what I was eating earlier to be able to enjoy the cake. Now it doesn't even phase me, you know? So one, don't take anything off the table. No one wants to live that way. Um, and two, pay very attention to what's filling you up. I've seen the pictures before. I'm sure you guys have all seen them all over the internet. And it's two pictures of food. And one is like a bag of Cheez-Its that's 230 calories. And the picture next to it is a, is a huge salad with all the toppings. And it's the same amount of calories and it's massive food. Be very aware of what you're spending your calories on. And I always tell people to think of calories as cash. You know, you want to end the day with some cash in the bank. So you got to be very smart how you spend it. Um, Are you going to fill up on a bag of Cheez-Its that's about the size of my palm? Or do you want to fill up on food that's going to make you feel satisfied and it's about the size of like, (laughs) I don't even know, a pie or even more, you know? Be very careful and aware of how you spend your cash. And when you're smart with it, there's always cash left over for extra spending like cake at a birthday party. <laughs> love it. Love it. Absolutely. Love it. 
that's how you're fit 20, you know, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week is being very aware of what's, you know, filling you up. And then also the last one is pay attention to what you consider to be healthy versus what's going to get you lean. So even though a sandwich with organic bread and, um, you know, it's huge and, and everything on it's organic and stuff. And then you're going to have like these chips that are non GMO and everything like that's great, but eating that many carbs, even though it's health, it's organic and healthy eating that many carbs and using up your calories that way is definitely not going to get you lean. I had to learn very, very, um, slowly what, I was doing, because I've always been aware of organic and ingredients and reading labels. And I'd eat like a bowl of sugar cereal for breakfast. And I'd be like, what? It's organic and I love it. And it's healthy. And it's these frosted flakes. And then I learned, but if I eat oats and eggs every morning, oh, I'm starting to cut up now. So open your eyes to what we think is healthy versus what's going to make us lean and cut up. Because if your goal is to drop body fat, you definitely want what's going to make you lean, not just a healthier choice. Yeah. Makes a big difference in does in, in those choices. So thank you so much for sharing that. I'm one other thing when I think about we talked about mindset, we talked about nutrition. What do people need to know before they get into an exercise program? You know, some people will get into walking. And, you know, you hear so many times that people are like, well, you're not going to get any benefits from walking. You need to be running. And that's not the case. You know, sometimes I think, you know, if you walk 45 minutes, you can still have the same, you know, benefits as someone who ran for 25. Sure. Yeah. And you're learning, like, again, you're learning how to be consistent and dedicated. There's so many little lessons that you can get from that. Plus you're burning calories, right? It doesn't matter because overall big picture, it's calories in versus calories being burned. I don't care. I tell people, I'm like, I don't care if you walk, run or crawl your miles today, just be active and get them in. Yeah. But starting a fitness journey, know that you are not going to start at the same place as the person next to you. They have a whole different body structure than you. They might have different muscle memory. Maybe that person played college sports and you're just been the chick that shows up at the gym and does aerobic classes, two totally different body types. So don't compare your journey and how you start to anyone else and know that you really shouldn't have an end date. People think that's so backwards and so wrong when I tell them that. And I'm like, don't put an end date on it. Because this is something that you want to be open to for the rest of your life. Now, if you're doing a challenge or a boot camp and you're like, okay, this is done in 12 weeks. Awesome. Have a plan though. What is going to happen on that very next day? That week after a program does end is crucial because most people pause and there is no room to pause on your fitness journey. My mascot in our group, Busy to Bomb Fit Mom, is a shark. And it's not because they're big and ferocious and have teeth and, you know, hunt and blah. It's because sharks cannot stop swimming. They will die. They will literally die if they stop swimming. I tell the women all the time as, as parents and moms and dads, if you stop your fitness journey, there's so much going on in our life. You will end it. The kid gets sick deal with lice or pink eye, you know, the, the tires on the car needs to get changed. Like any little bump in the road can make a stop, learn how to swim around it. And you might have to slow swim really, really slow. Just don't stop. Have that in mind when you're starting your journey that like, I'm going to have a no matter what attitude. I don't care if Johnny and Susie both get sick next week and I have to fit my workout in at 10 PM. I'm going to keep swimming. Keep going. Don't have an end date. Don't ever stop that journey. Find a way to push through it. Put in the, I don't feel like it reps. And that's what will keep you going. It's not an instructor or drill sergeant yelling at you or texting you every two seconds. It's finding the way to just keep moving, swimming every single day. Because we know life happens. It's going to. Those yeah. Falls come. So tell us a little bit more about your podcast. Yeah. My, my podcast is, is, 
interesting. It's very interesting. It started off just being the Bob Mom podcast. Like we're going to talk about health and fitness and how to be an awesome mom. And it's grown into men loving it. So we have so many male listeners, but I want to cover everything. So, I mean, we're talking relationships, we're talking health and nutrition. We're also talking mindset. We're talking affirmations. We've had, um, intuitives on the show. We've had the, uh, trainer from the biggest loser on the show. Like we've had so many different people and they're always telling me like, Melissa, stay in your lane. I'm like, I can't because health and fitness is everything. It's not just about working out and eating right. You have to get the mind straight, mindset straight. You have to have the right affirmations. You have to learn the mental toughness. The the episode that just came out on Monday, we have a Navy combat veteran on who earned a purple heart and I'm pulling mental toughness from him. And it's an amazing episode. And people are like, never would expected that on the Bob mom podcast. I'm like, yes, but how much did you learn about being mentally tough? from someone who was in the military, like that's freaking cool. So I tell everyone like, don't judge it, jump in, listen, because there's something in there for everyone. And you can take away so many little things from every single episode that literally could change your life. And one of the things I think I want everybody to pay attention to is remember when you're seeing someone, you're seeing one moment of time, but the fact that you see that in them means that you can do it too. And it all started with a plan and steps that came in place. And as Melissa said, you know, it's all about that openness. I can't stress that enough. That is a big game changer for those of you listening, because being open to the possibilities that exist for you, because you, you hear the phrase and Melissa, I'd love your take on this. Some people will say, well, I need to see it before I believe it, but really it's about believing it using your imagination to believe it so that you can put in the effort to achieve it. So tell me what happens when, you know, when you have a client saying, well, I don't see the changes. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what changes I always ask, I'm like, what changes were you expecting to see? Why did you expect to see it so fast? And especially I, I make my clients look at their fitness journey as um, a baby being born. So when they come into the group and they're, they're like, I've been here three months. I feel like I should be down a lot more. Like I don't see any changes. And I'm like, you're a three month old baby. How much do we expect from a three month old infant? Right. And they're like, Oh, and then when we have women in the group, who's been there for nine months and I'm like, girl, you're just learning how to walk. (laughs) even the toddlers and the people who've been there for two years. I'm like, you're a toddler. How much do we really expect from a toddler? You should walk, be talking and doing some things. You're definitely different than the one week old infant or the three month old infant. So why are you putting this timeline on yourself? of Like, Oh, I should see changes by now. Says who says, says who. And, you know, also too, I'm like, Don't ever judge your journey based on like how much weight you've lost or where you're currently at. What have you learned from the time where you started to the time now, even if you haven't lost weight, that's still data that you're collecting on your body. Because let's say you gained 10 pounds and you're like, I should have lost 10 pounds. You learned what doesn't work. You learned what held you back. You learned how you failed and why you failed. And now we can take that three years of what you think is failure as data. Let's apply it to the, or the three months. Now let's apply it to the next three months and not do what you did. And girl, you're going to get results. Nothing's wasted. Nothing is wasted. That's why I refer to that as celebrating failures. Because yes. Really, it's not a failure. It's really a learning experience. Yep. And- able to shift gears and recognize when things are not working but also knowing that muscle weighs more than fat so be careful um how how people are judging that or if it's if they're in their menstrual cycle i heard it best one time when uh, someone with it was a teenager saying oh i weigh so much and the lady said well do you happen to be on your menstrual cycle and she's like yeah she goes so for sure, you got five extra pounds hanging on there. So don't even stress about it when there's these normal 
functions that happened to your body and said we need to be celebrating these things and recognizing it's amazing what our bodies can do and really to show up for ourselves because like I said this is the kind of the theme that has come up for me during our interview Melissa is really how do we show up best for ourselves and yeah. one of the biggest things that you were talking about is how there is this transference this way you look after yourself is how you show up in other areas of your life and when you build that discipline when you can say no to things like how many times have you said yes to things when you didn't mean to how about uh yeah talk talk to us a little bit about some boundaries <laughs> yeah absolutely you know and when you can learn th that's why i love saying like use your fitness journey and working out and like that we're talking a lot about that but this is practice for other areas of your life you know when you can learn to say no to the ice cream and yes to this you know this this is a great substitute you can learn to set boundaries on things that you allow your children to do and be like no, I'm putting my foot down or how other people treat you or in the workforce and building your business. You know, you really use your fitness and your health for practice for like real life, you know, and you get to learn how tough you are in the gym and showing up. And then you're like, you know what? I'm a badass babe and I can go for that promotion. I, I just squatted a hundred pounds. You think I can't go for this promotion or, or start this new business journey or this venture? Like I just learned how tough I am. I, I, I could totally do that. And it's amazing. Cause that's one of the, my favorite growths to see people in my program is yeah, they're becoming, you know, hitting those goals they want and stuff, but they literally change their identity and they come in as this like not so confident female, low self-esteem, really struggling. And within a few months, they're like, I'm bomb. I'm a bomb mom. Like I can do anything. And that mom at the, I had someone tell me this last week. She's like that mom at the PTA meeting. She always puts me down and she never listens to my ideas. She's like, I stood up at that meeting and I told her we're doing this for the dance this year. And we're doing this and we're going to start this food drive. And the moms like all looked at her was like, where did you come from? <laughs> She's like, but I'm, I'm a bomb mom. They don't know I'm a bomb mom, but like, I'm a bomb mom and I'm tough. And she couldn't wait to come back and tell us this. And I'm like, yes, this is the growth. This is how you use your fitness journey to be freaking amazing and unstoppable in other areas of your life. Even if it's just the PTA meeting. <laughs> Absolutely. Melissa, I think I'm going to need some swag here up in Canada for my yes. to walk around with the bomb mom. <laughs> this message as well. Um, we're wrapping up here and just want to ask you a couple more questions. What is one book that has been had a significant impact on your life, whether it be mindset, whether it be fitness, but something that triggered you in that book that stood out for you the most? Oh my gosh, I have it right here. It's funny you say that I'm just wrapping it up. It's called Shift. And the author is Adele Spragan. And I just had her on my podcast um, the other week. And it's four steps to personal empowerment. And I know it sounds like a typical self-help self -help book, but she talks about brain patterns and how we learn these patterns early on, early on childhood. And then this is just the way we do certain things or handle certain situations. And then they show up later in life and we don't make the connection to the trauma that happened as a child or just things that were we taught. And then it shows up on our fitness journey and us self-sabotaging, or we're just not going for that goal in life, or we're just settling for average or whatever. And she puts it in a way of undoing these patterns, learning new ways over time. And it's, it's been amazing. I love the book. It's super thin and it's, it's four easy steps and it makes you look at things differently. So it's not like, oh, I'm just a failure or I could never do that. So shift. It's really, really good. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And also what does it mean to you to live rich from the inside out? Oh, you know, for me, true wealth is knowing my value. Being rich on the inside for me is knowing that I am worth every workout that I do, that I am worth 
you know, taking care of myself, that I am worth the fuel. I'm worth the time. I'm worth sitting down and reading a book. That's where I get my value because it doesn't matter what, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks of me. If I'm not happy with my decisions and how I'm living my life and where I hold myself in my eyes, I'm poor. I'm poor if I don't have that. You know, it makes, you know, when you were talking about cash and salad and (laughs) it's really comes down to that wealth of yourself, that deserving, that worthiness that you're talking about, because I love that how you talked about the transaction, you can have so much, but still be poor. And when we think of some people who have lots of money, they have a very poor mindset. So knowing that you know you can have that abundant mindset and knowing that you are bring value to the world but not only that how valuable you are just to yourself yeah so i want to thank you so much for coming on the mich- the show, Melissa, we have so many great nuggets that people, you're going to have to do this on repeat seriously. And I know we'll have <laughs> to have you back at some time because I can for sure all night long. And there's so many things that I would love to still touch on. But I, right now, I want you just to share with us, how can people stay in touch with you? Yeah, my biggest platform that people are following because I really show an inside of my life is my Instagram, Melissa Vogel Fitness. Um, you can connect with me on there. I love getting DMs. I, I put all crazy parts of my life on my story because I like to show the madness of like, yeah, this craziness is going on, still getting to the gym, still showing up for me, still putting in the work. Um, and also my website's melissavogelfitness.com. Um, and then the podcast is bomb mom, bomb mom podcast. I love your podcast. (laughs) I listen to it while I'm working out. So keep me going, (laughs) keeps me going. So thank you so much for coming on the show. We're going to have all everything on the, in the show notes, cause she's even got TikTok. So um, yes, ma'am. you can stay in touch with her and her Instagram. Like I said, I was scrolling through it before the show, tons of information really gets you thinking. And, and that's what I, I think I loved most about you is because I like to leave people thinking and uh, you do the same. So I really appreciate you coming on. And again, shout out to Adam Shibley, my bud from podcast business school. He's rocking it out there as well. So check him out. I'd also love for you to go over to my website at www.debrakazowski.com where right now you can, you know, buddy up some of the information you shared um, tonight with the Making Habits Stick program that is free to you, three-part video course, building that focus and consistency to knock those goals and dreams out of the park. You're going to find out what some of your derailers are by just doing this course alone. And like I said, it's complimentary to you. Love for you to go check it out. Now, if you're interested in some coaching, DM me, send me a message, and we will connect. As Muhammad Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. And on behalf of Melissa and myself, go out and make today great.